set for release on November 4th, 2021 by solo indie publisher and dev Nils Kastens. Stardridge is a 2D action platformer with a light Metroidvania vibe, heavy platforming, and some puzzle elements. The difficulty on this one though gradually ramps up from casual to insanely hard, so proceed at your own risk. Thanks to the developer for the review key. The story of Stardridge is its weakest element, but serves its purpose regardless. You're a Lunaris, a space explorer, and your ship has crash-landed on a mysterious planet, completely uncharted terrain for the adventurer. She now has to, with the aid of her AI companion and a handful of newly found allies, repair her ship and get the hell out of Dodge. And of course, this is easier said than done. It's one of those generic Metroid wannabe stories, but serves well enough to create context and not have you feel like a purposeless wandering lunatic. Let's talk visuals. Breathtaking, these hand-drawn 2D visuals are what I love to see in a game. What can I say? I'm a sucker for aesthetics. Lunaris, along with all the other characters, are beautifully illustrated. The backgrounds are exploding with character and fine detail. I also love the extra attention paid to things like when Lunaris has low health. She actually looks like she's knocking on heaven's door. I do believe, however, regardless of the attention paid to character details, a bit more work could have gone into the overall animations. And it's all good. I understand this is an independent effort, so there was a finite budget. And like it or not, I will always give a little slack to indie devs. While I've never developed a game before, I know it's no easy or cheap feat to accomplish. The sound design was done well enough. The score in particular is commendable, beautifully composed, and fits like a glove. The sound effects, however, could use a bit of a boost, but this is definitely subjective. As who's to say how a photon blaster or whatever her weapon is called is supposed to sound like anyway? Other than let's say weapon sounds though, the effects overall were ho-hum, but got the job done. There's no voice acting. And while I do prefer even subpar voice acting over none at all, I have to look at this objectively. Games aren't just made for me to have a good time with. I'm pretty certain there are others out there who would rather read text as opposed to voice acting that sounds like the dev and their family members pitched in to help out. And I can agree that really bad voice acting can be immersion breaking, so I won't come down too hard on the developer for omitting voice acting entirely. There's also a potentially hefty cost that comes with hiring voice actors, so I get it. Gameplay, like I said earlier, Stardridge has a light Metroidvania vibe to it. There is some exploration, some backtracking, and some areas which won't be accessible until you've done a few things first. And similar to Metroid, you start out with a handicap. As you progress, you find parts and elements which bring you back to top form. You start out pretty bare bones actually, with only a sword, but you're able to level up by finding items which unlocks abilities, or visiting this mermaid-like creature you met who has magical abilities. As you progress, she explains how it all works to your benefit. You collect these orbs which lay around kinda like coins in Mario and rings in Sonic. This is your currency. You're able to increase power, durability, shot speed, and so on. I'd say there's a decent enemy variety, and as you progress through the world, they get a bit harder as expected. The bosses though, could use a bit more creativity, and I'm only saying this because I know there's sadomasochists out there who can't sleep well at night without a hard-boiled challenge. Me? I hate boss battles generally anyway, so I'm good. Where difficulty is concerned, there's a decent balance, but again, subjective. The first area should be treated as one long tutorial, something to get your feet wet, because shortly afterwards, the game begins to throw leniency out the window, from the bosses to the regular henchmen, to the platforming, and even the checkpoints. At first I thought, hey, this is my kind of save system. You fail, you don't start too far back. But man was I wrong. I did say though, there is a decent balance here. And that's assuming you're not completely new to the genre. If you are, you may think otherwise. I really do like this game, and I wholeheartedly recommend it, but in the same breath. I'm not in the business of pulling wool over anyone's eyes. There's something about Stardridge that although not a deal breaker, 
definitely rubs me the wrong way. Here we go. This game requires a lot of precision, particularly in platforming, as the platforming gets real crazy. But here's the thing, as I have no problem with a well-balanced challenge, but the controls are just not tight enough, not refined enough. For what is required here, controlling Lunaris should be airtight, bulletproof, but it's not. It kinda reminds me of controlling Luigi in some Mario games, but worse. There's just this unrefined feeling when trying to perform certain acts. It feels like input lag, like a split second delay in reaction times. And going back to the whole Luigi reference, Lunaris feels like she makes a slight extra movement after you have stopped, ever so slight, but an experienced gamer can feel these things. The controls require refinement, and I really hope the developer watches this and takes this into consideration for an update before release. I can tell there's something off, a design flaw, as a few times I was moving, stopped pressing the controller, and Lunaris kept running. So please, iron this out. As your game is really good, I genuinely like it. But for a title that throws some hellish levels of platforming at you, for a title that expects such precision from its players, these little things are actually quite large. There's one other thing as well. Lunaris can't seem to crouch and strike. She has to stand up first. She can crouch and shoot, but nothing with the sword. Other than that, this gorgeous indie gem works for me, and I can easily recommend it to you lovely people watching. It'll be out on PC, but also looks like an ideal candidate for the Switch. Don't get me wrong, it would be great on any console really. But it just has this switchy look and feel to it, if you get what I'm saying. AAA games are all well and good, but many times, if you'd like a truly unique experience, one off the beaten path, then the indie scene is where you want to be. Show your support and love for independent game developers. Most if not all indie games are priced relatively low, some are even free with the option to donate, so there's really no reason to pass. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's say I pissed you off though. Then hey, we all know where to find the various hate buttons, don't we? Either way, I won't hold it against you. Our game? is never over.